Welcome to Worthy Ones, the video series where I take the newest issue one comic books that I read for the current comic book week and deem them worthy or not worthy. I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. If you love daily comic book content, if you love me helping you make decisions on what comic books to buy, why don't you consider hitting that subscribe button? I don't think you'll be disappointed. Also, guys, if you want to become a member of the channel, it's on my home screen. You hit that membership button button and it's a small donation of 99 cents as low as 99 cents you guys can get uh stickers for live chats and you can get badges for how long you've been a member for you can get early releases to videos so again it's just another way to support the channel if you do that's great if you don't it's just as fine, but just something to consider. So with that being said, guys, let's get into this week's Worthy Ones. It's going to be a doozy. Pops Chocolate Shop of Horrors Fresh Meat. This is issue one. This is a horror anthology comic book for the price of $4. The writers here is Ryan Caddy, Jonathan Morris, Amy Chase. The artists are Chris Panda, Leanna Gangus, and Federico Sabantini is uh, the other artist in here. There's three different stories. And if you're an Archie fan, this is something that you might want to pick up. Now, this was a week where the big two didn't have a lot of new number ones. There was another like new X-Men issue one that I did not want to get. So I passed on it. And sometimes with these, you know, uh, independent comic books, you never know when they can surprise you. And this is really a story about Pop's uh, malt shop where it's like he's he did a deal with the devil so his doors stay open and you kind of get to see that story in here a little bit but then it's surrounded by a couple other stories and the best story for me was the story where it's just like Little Shop of Horrors where Jughead finds this like alien plant and he's with Archie and uh, the plant is dying when they have it in its possession and then all of a sudden it takes Archie uh, as hostage and he says you gotta feed me flesh in order to keep your friend alive and that's what like Jughead does uh, throughout the little short story here. That was the most entertaining story otherwise you see like the deal is made with the devil with Pop and stuff like that on what he has to do to keep his shop open. This book is just okay, but it's it's not for in any other week. If there was any other number ones, I would pass on this book, but there wasn't a lot of them out there. This is not something that you really want to spend your money on unless you are an Archie fan. This is not really a bad book in any stretch of the imagination. I'm not a fan of anthology books, but horror is something where I kind of, you know, I'll make an exception, that and Spider-Man. But uh, at the end of the day, there's just other books out there to buy. I'm going to give this one a C-, minus, uh, and that's, that's kind of being generous in my eyes. Bloodshot Unleashed Reloaded Issue 1. Yeah, that's right. Bloodshot is back. I didn't even know Valiant Comics was still in business. How can they still come out with comic books? This is a 32-page comic for $5. There's a couple of writers on this. Denise Camp and Mario Mantella. The art is done by Al Bernierivo. I'm sorry. Sorry if I said your name wrong. The artwork is fantastic in this book it opens up and you're just like oh man here we go action adventure blood bath i can't wait to see this story the first like four pages you're like okay we're ready to go and then after that it sucks it's it's this guy who is blood squirt who bloodshot sees in his eyes he's like shut up stop talking to me it's like trying to break the fourth wall it's trying to be like a freaking um uh, Deadpool comic book or the way Nightcrawler has his little guys on his shoulder and stuff like that. It just doesn't work. And in this book, it's a rinse and repeat type of style book. It almost feels like an anthology in many ways. It doesn't really make you feel for the character. It tries to make you feel for characters that you have no interest about who they're going to be gone in two seconds instead of focusing really on the Bloodshot character. And what this book does is it, Bloodshot's out for like other robots out there other soldiers that have been experimented on that are causing violence and in this comic we get to learn about a random character who is getting killed by this other you know robot right and uh and then what happens is bloodshot's about two seconds too late and then they start fighting again 
and then the robot distracts him, you know, puts an injury on his body or whatever it is, goes to the next victim, and so on and so forth. And you get this little fucker right here that sits there and says crap about bloodshot and how he should be do this and this is a rebirth and all this other stuff. This book is just so not worth it. The only thing going for it, the only thing going for it was the artwork on this book. Even when I did my comic book haul, people were like, oh, Bloodshot has a comic book coming out? Oh, if I knew this was Bloodshot, maybe I would have picked this up. No one knows this book exists. Just keep it that way. This book is just, again, it's not worthy. At the end of the day, this book is going to get an F plus because the artwork was really good. And unfortunately, it's wasted on this comic. But uh, yeah, don't buy it, guys. Man's Best. This is issue one. This is a 32-page comic for the price of $5. Uh, we have a writer who's porn sack pitch a shoot? I don't know. Artist Jesse Longgrain or Longer Grain? I don't know. Uh, the artwork is cool in this comic because it reminds me of a Sunday comic strip back in the day. I liked it. It had its own like distinct feel in it. The characters had weird faces. It was just, I don't know. Again, it reminded me of that comic strip and I liked it. I thought that the uh, pets looked pretty cool too. They're all retrofitted for like their own like little suits and stuff. So I thought that was neat. And what this comic is about is that there is a ship that crashes onto a planet. It's a planet that they're looking to live on, the crew, because the Earth is about to die. And then the crew gone, is gone missing. And then the loyal pets have to go and find the crew, right? So basically, you see that happen at the very end of the issue. And in the beginning, the book does its best to introduce, like, the pets. Their names are not the best types of names. There's, like anthos and lovey and it's kind of hard to remember their names and they're kind of like the pets are all like scattered brain and they're always arguing with each other and so it was a little bit i don't know it was a little bit disjointed for me at times and i felt like right from the start i was already like in an issue two or maybe issue three of a comic book that's just getting started i kind of wish it, it like slowed things down a little bit and got me more involved with the pets themselves and their personalities and see them actually slowly get introduced into the roles that they actually are uh that was my issue with it but otherwise it it is a pretty cool concept and maybe we'll get to learn about the pets after they have found their crew or while they're finding their crew and maybe the adventures that they go on on this planet will be a lot of fun so it's still yet to de be determined if this book is truly worthy but for now i'm gonna call it worthy see what issue two has to bring and uh hopefully this book gets better as time goes along I'm a pet guy. I love animals and I love when books introduce animals there and go on adventures and stuff like that. Not the best book, uh, but not the worst either. I'm going to give this one a C plus and we'll see the direction it goes. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Untold Destiny of the Foot Clan. This is issue one. This is a 28 page comic for the price of $4. The uh, creators here is Eric Burnham and Mateus Santa Luco. Uh, the artwork is really good. There's lots of action. There's fighting in this comic. Get to see like Bebop and Rocksteady and all those other all mutants in here. And uh, this is a story about, you know, the Foot Clan and, and their adventures. And Casey Jones is part of them, which I didn't know at one point he was like part of the Foot Clan. Um, I don't read that much Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles anymore. So let me know in the comments below, like, if you ever saw him part of the Foot Clan, I, I don't remember that, but uh, really interesting. And then this uh, book, we wind up seeing, seeing the Foot Clan go against what is called the new Dog Star Clan. And they're like cyborg ninjas. And we get to see Shredder's granddaughter go against these guys and she gets her ass beat. And she's at the point of death in this comic book. And she is forced to, she's fighting for her life. Now, whether she survives or not, we shall see. But it was an interesting story. Again, seeing all these cast of characters like, you know, Casey Jones and Bebop, 
Clyde and Rocksteady and just it was fun. I had a great time and uh, this was actually better than the most recent Last Ronin issue for me. Um, I felt like I was invested in the Shredder's granddaughter's story here if she was going to survive or not, the mystery of this new clan. Uh, so this book is worthy in my eyes. This is going to be a book that I continue. I just got to remember to put it on my pull list. But what did you guys think of this one as a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan? And if there's any information uh, in this comment section below that you can give me about Casey Jones, let me know. But I'm going to give this one a solid B. Looking forward to the next issue. Web of Spider-Man, this is issue one. This is a 56-page comic for $8. It's got a slew of creators on here because this is a glorified preview magazine. We've had other discussions in the past of what I thought about stories that are up and coming for certain like publishing companies. We saw one from Distillery that I didn't like. We saw one for Ghost Machine, which I thought was really, really good. And now we got of what's to come for Spider-Man in 2024. In fact, not just Spider-Man, but for the whole Spider family. They try to make it a story, okay, by introducing Madam Web and her seeing the, the glimpses of the future of what's to happen with our Spider heroes. We're going to get many different artists because you're getting a bunch of different stories that are coming out uh, throughout, again, the web of life. Like your favorite, John Ramuda Jr. Uh, we we wind up getting to see the you know the artist that's on uh, Miles Morales Spider Man and things like that. So let's go over the stories here a little bit, okay? So the first story has to deal with Tombstone. We've been getting that all the way through freaking Zeb Wells' run of Amazing Spider Man. There's nothing new there. The story is like four pages long, very like who cares type of story. Then we get Miles Morales, which is, if you've been reading the series, you totally get what's been going on in there as well. There's nothing really new as he's coming across Hightail, which we've already seen that character like two or three times in Cody Ziegler's run. The artwork is very nice in this comic book. Gives you across the Spider-Verse vibes in there, so that was pretty cool. But so far, nothing exciting, right? Then we get the whole Jessica Drew story. We find out that, obviously, if you read The Gang War, her son Jerry has gone missing. Two pages for that story. Nothing exciting there. Looks like she's going to be moving to L.A., and we could see a West Coast Avengers comic. That's my guess, and she's going to be part of that team. Then we get to see another story with the Gold Goblin, Norman Osborn. The dude is turning to a dark side. We've already known that if you read the... Um, Pages of Amazing Spider-Man. Now, this this story here, when it came to Gwen Stacy, uh, this one might give you a little insight of what's going on with her on why she is going to the 616. Okay, so that was okay. That was a time variance authority. The artwork was good in there, and uh, she gets recruited. Then we get visited by Madeline Pryor. The artwork is done by Greg Land in that story. And we get to see what's going on with Chasm. She's basically given up on him. She said, my time has passed with keeping him in a prison. If he wants to escape, go ahead and escape. So he escapes and he's going to be in a book in the future. We don't even know. It just says, you know, Chasm will return. <laughs> And then we get like this little off the wall story with spectacular Spider-Man and it's just kind of like a nothing story of them fighting some burglars. The first issue just came out. There's nothing there to really, I don't know, get excited about. You saw the first issue and it's like you got more excited off of that than that little two page spread. There's, just, there's nothing there. Probably the biggest story, there's two stories in here uh, that might catch your attention. If you haven't read anything with Kane recently, this is a story where it's like, okay, there's something coming out with him. He's going to be doing a battle against an Eternal. That might be something that interests you. And that one, they focused a little bit more of a story to get you to know the character, what his power set is, who his like nemesis will be in the future. Okay, get that. But nothing there where it's like, oh my gosh, like I got to really read this. And then we get the story where I said in the Edge of Spider-Verse, it was a waste of time, right? Because 
you're going to get what's going on with Spider-Man 2099 in this preview book. So everything that they talked about in that Edge of Spider-Verse book, they kind of recycled it here and said, okay, Spider-Man 2099, you are going to gather a team of characters and you're going to stop this threat. We wind up Spider getting to see Spider-Man 29 being captured. Could be killed right off, the, right off the bat. But of course, this is comic books. The character doesn't get killed. We get introduced to a Green Goblin in this comic book. Oh, surprise, surprise. It's freaking Gwen Stacy. You could see the writing on the wall from a mile away. And then what happens is he gets free. Then he gets captured again. And then we get to see Aranya in this comic. And it's it's kind of like a story that's all over the place. And you don't know where it's going. Uh, but it seems like it could have potential there. And then at the end of the day, they do a recap page on the very last page of everything that's coming out in one page you could have done that in the amazing spider-man book on like what's to come you didn't need to get this comic book to be released and charge people freaking eight dollars for it it is not worthy it is not a worthy comic book in any stretch of the imagination it's a waste of money they put a nice little fancy great capullo cover on it but this is horrible there's so much stuff in this comic book that we already knew that's been going on especially if you've been reading these titles there's nothing here that gets you like so excited it's just it was very bland the only thing that I got anything out of was the Kane story, the Gwen Stacy story to see, okay, how is she crossing over the 616? And and, and then if you want to read Spider-Man 2099, well, there you go. But that wasn't really exciting either, man. This is, this is just a failure in all levels. And I hate when Marvel does this. I hate when comic companies do this. The only people that did it right so far is like... Um, is the ghost machine thing. They really went out of their way to tell good stories and get you attached to characters and stuff like that. This is an F. This is an F in all many levels. It's too much money. If you want to do a preview book, if you want to get people excited for it, make it affordable for people. If you charge people two bucks for this, then I can understand, okay, $2, you get 56 pages of some of the most exciting stories that could come out from you know your spider family, and that might be a little bit more worth it. $8, way too much, guys. Way, way too much. Need to do better. So there you guys have it. Not a great week for new number ones. There was a couple of diamonds in this rough episode. Uh, I want to know the new number ones that you read this week and deemed worthy or not worthy. Do you agree with my opinions on the ones that I did read? And of course, guys, if you love the content, here's everything that I picked up on my newest comic book day haul. And uh, I got to get reading because I got 20 more books to read. So as always, guys, support the local comic shops. Keep buying, keep collecting. But always remember, read those comics. I'll see you guys real soon. Take care. Bye.